Bokitov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. A bit of a bad news coming out already this morning, especially if you're waking up in the United States, if you weren't up late last night to uh, already hear about the Manchester suicide bombing blast. RT News, BBC, many others are reporting about this blast that has taken place there in uh, Britain last night uh, during a performance by the popular pop star uh, from the United States, Ar Arena uh, Grande. And uh, of course, uh, it has left 22 people dead. She's already uh, tweeting this morning from what people have said that uh, her condolences to the loss of life. Some 22 to 23 people uh, have been killed in the blast. Among the blasts were including children. And already there is yet another suspicious package uh, being found, being reported by BBC Sputnik News. We picked it up this morning at London's Victoria Coach Station. Uh, according to authorities there, there were over 400 police dispatched uh, to the area of Manchester uh, and of course they're doing everything they can to bring this situation under control after this blast and there has been a report already according to uh, a, uh, a uh, Eastern news source there RTHK uh, stating that it is, was a, indeed a suicide bombing blast according to authorities there uh, that have been investigating the blast as the man behind the terror attack at, at a pop concert in Manchester overnight on Monday died when he detonated his device, killing 22 others, including children, and injuring 59 uh, people, police said on Tuesday. Greater Manchester Police Chief Ian Hopkins said the man had set off an improvised explosive device as the audience was leaving the concert by a U.S. pop star, Arena Grande. Uh, the other troubling issue as well, and this is something that Tucker Carlson reported. Uh, we picked it up on Twitter because we're uh, subscribed to Car uh, Tucker Carlson. And listen to this uh, account right here from a gentleman that was there at the concert last night speaking about a lack of or absolutely no security outside the event, uh, something very unusual. Listen to what he has to say here concerts before and we get sometimes you get tied down and get to to empty pockets there was absolutely nothing at this concert tonight we, we, we just literally got our tickets scanned in the stray but this yeah. is so that was going into the concert so there's no security whatsoever on the outside where the, where the explosion took place so anybody could have brought anything into where the bomb went off yeah anyone as we left um because there was that's very disturbing to find this out as well this morning that uh, according to this eyewitness, uh, Chris Pauly, stating that there was no security whatsoever outside the event uh, when they were coming in. Now, he said uh, later that uh, he wasn't sure about inside the event, but as far as outside the event, they were able to enter in without being searched. And as he noted, this was something very unusual there. They've always been searched, always asked to empty their pockets, uh, etc., but not in this particular case here. Moving on in other news this morning here, partisan girl uh, who actually lives inside of Syria says, wow, leaked photos showing U.S. soldiers entered southern Syria from Jordan to train terrorists. I reported this invasion last month. Uh, well, she's right about that. We ourselves as well, and, and partisan girl is one of the uh, Syrian uh, uh, people that bring out news that goes on inside of Syria that we also follow on Twitter because she does have some remarkable first-hand accounts of things that are going on uh, there. And yes, as you can see here on the image here, and let me just see if I can put this big enough on the screen for you, uh, it definitely does appear to be uh, U.S. soldiers, as you can see on the gentleman there in the middle there with their three backs to the screen, you have a U.S. flag patch on his shoulder and uh, they are definitely meeting with rebel fighters that are fighting against uh, Syrians, uh, uh, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's forces. And of course, it is an alleged uh, uh, an account. We cannot verify that independently. And uh, 
be kind of difficult. I guess you'd have to be there to know for sure. But we've already reported to you uh, in the case here, the uh, Al Mayadeen news source, which is another Syrian news source that actually was the original one uh, to share these aerial photos of UK and British forces uh, on the border of Syria, right there, uh, Jordan-Syrian border. Now, as we reported the other day, Norwegian forces had already crossed the uh, the Syria, excuse me, the Iraqi border into Syria as well to help U.S. forces, as reported by Amman News there. Uh, and what are they there for? Well, you can pretty much guess why. Guess what we got coming out now? The FSA, Free Syrian Army groups in the Syrian desert, declare the beginning of the Burkhan and Badia volcano of the desert. Um, this is. Uh, uh, something that uh, they're going to be faced with. The Iranian and Assad forces will be uh, trying to combat this particular uh, latest move, and no doubt this is part of the groups that have been being trained all along. Uh, Trump says Iran and ISIS are major threats to the Middle East. This is something he said not only in Saudi Arabia, but he also said in Jerusalem, speaking at an address to the press conference uh, in Jerusalem on Monday, U.S. President Donald Trump said Iran is a threat to the region and must stop training terror groups. In statements following a working meeting with the Israeli President Reuven Rivlin, Trump noted that uh, noted Iran and the Islamic State as the major threats to the Middle East. Well, we, I am sure what we're going to see is once the uh, NATO allies there take down Bashar al-Assad uh, over Damascus, when the fight begins for Damascus, this is what's going to justify taking down Iran at the same time because Iran is going to fight to protect Bashar al-Assad and this will be when the fight uh, uh, to take out Iran will also uh, commence as well. I do believe it will be a simultaneous event. I think this is why we see the Saudis have done the $350 billion deal with the United States for arms uh, with the majority of those funds that are supposed to be spent over 10 years, $109 billion being spent the very first year. So it seems that the Saudis also are getting ready for a major confrontation with the Iranian forces and they are buying up as much supplies as they possibly can for that event. Uh, also, President Trump, he is the first president to actually uh, visit the Western Wall. And some are wondering, is this part of a new trend for the presidents of the United States? Well, I think that it has a lot to do with declaring that Jerusalem is now considered an international city. As we've reported on Israeli News Live before, it is evident that Ariel Sharon already signed a two-state agreement. And according to the source on that uh, Zaman, uh, Siman Tov, uh, who stated that uh, the aide to Ariel Sharon at that time had said that Jerusalem would be surrendered. So East Jerusalem will go to the Palestinians, but the main part of Jerusalem may very well go to a United Nations force. And it won't just be the U.S. Embassy moving to Jerusalem at that point. It'll be all the nation's embassies moving to Jerusalem at that point. So uh, that's very concerning. So the, the, even though it seems to be a good thing when we see President Trump going to the Wailing Wall, uh, in support of the, uh, the Jewish people, I still uh, watch this as a, a bit of skepticism of what the major sign and significance of this would be to the rest of the world that indeed perhaps Jerusalem is becoming an international city. Don't forget he will be meeting with Pope Francis tomorrow. Uh, today he is already meeting with Mahmoud Abbas. Jump over to that real quick. Um, well, actually, that's where he calls Hamas a major terror group as well. So Hamas is not very happy with uh, President Trump, but he's right. They are a major terrorist threat. Uh, totally uh, opposite of that of President, uh, former President Jimmy Carter, who still holds uh, Hamas's hand very dearly uh, as, as a great people. Uh, no comments were made either by the President of the United States nor President Abbas of the PLO during the initial handshake on the photo op in Bethlehem, as you can see here, the picture there. Uh, but there was one strange thing that happened, and I didn't notice it myself, even though I saw the event walking down the carpet there, the red carpet. But the First Lady of the United States, when uh, President Trump reached out to take her hand, she smacks his hand away. 
that just definitely does not seem to go over very well and I'm sure you can see this in the uh, photo here it was picked up by many uh, uh, in the press there especially on social media it went all over the place there that she slapped his hand away when he reached out to take her hand maybe something happened on the plane but you know if you think about it if you notice too it doesn't look like that uh, well maybe they are holding hands maybe uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife are yeah I guess they are holding hands there as well so makes you wonder what's going on maybe a little bit of a riff there on the plane before landing and that's why she didn't take his hand because she definitely didn't seem to be very be very happy of president trump at that time i'm stephen benoon you're watching israeli news live uh don't forget uh we do need your support and i, I apologize for keep asking about your support uh here lately but uh the we are getting ready to go on national television in the United States with the hopes of bringing a balance of reporting of things that are going on in the Middle East, bringing that to the United States airwaves there. Uh, that'll be this coming Saturday, uh, so get ready for that, and we will update you with the time frames as soon as we have everything pinned down exactly for sure what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, but we'll let you know. Uh, but this coming Saturday, Israeli News Live will debut on uh, internet, excuse me, uh, national television in the United States. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing here, please help support this work. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can contribute there. And if you would like to be a sponsor of Israeli News Live on uh, television in the United States on satellite TV across the nation, 20 plus, 20 plus million homes uh, that we will be going into once a week as from a prophetic impact overview, uh, we encourage you to contact us. We'll place our email in the description box below if you'd like to contact us about this. We do have uh, an advertising spot available for this particular purpose. So if you have a business that you would like to sponsor on Israeli News Live, we would love to have you as a sponsor. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.